Hi. In a previous video I showed you how I use the Akai Force in my setup and how I use a MIDI controller to control the various parameters of my hardware synthesizers via the Force and how I record the audio from those synthesizers into Ableton. Uh, well, that video <laughs> got quite a lot of attention and people wanted to know more. So that's when I started thinking about the, the, the format and how I would structure those videos. Uh, should I create longer videos with lots of information in them or sh create shorter videos uh, which I can put in a playlist? I chose for the last option. Uh, well, consider this the, the first video. I want the videos to be short, uh, really bite-sized. Uh, and apart from this intro, uh, the other videos should be uh, quite short depending on the subject. Okay. This video is about the Akai Force and I, how I have set it up and uh, how I made a user template uh, for use with my synthesizers and sampler. Okay, let's set it up. And to create a user template, simply create all the tracks you want, uh, cre create the settings that you want, and then save the project and tick here, uh, save as template. Easy. Okay, when I first started working with the Archive Force, I, I really wanted to have all uh, my tracks in the 8x8 grid um, because it's tidy and you don't have to use the directional buttons uh, that much. But when I started using uh, it more for live and jam sessions, uh, I really noticed that I needed more tracks. So uh, I thought a lot, uh, a lot about what should be uh, directly available and what can be placed outside of the 8x8 grid. And I figured since the, the MAM, the little case over here, uh, is mainly sequenced by the Octatrack and the Octatrack itself is controlled yeah, by the, the, the physical knobs on the device and the MIDI controller, those can be left outside of the grid. And I have another track that can be left outside as well. I set it up in a way that uh, I feel most comfortable with uh, while performing. I created three drum tracks. And the first one is for the kick, the second for percussive sounds, hi-hats and, and such. The third is for vocal and FX. The fourth track is a plugin track. And all the other tracks are MIDI tracks. Well, what except the last one and um, I've set it up in such a way that the kick is going out to output 3 and 4 I know that you can use only or have to use only one output for the kick but uh, I want to have a, a flexible setup and sometimes I make uh, more techno kicks and that, that are more spacious and then I will use three and four, but the other time I will use just one, output three. And for the bass, for instance, I can use output four. Okay, well, since we're in the mixer, I will also go to the master uh, mixer. Uh, all the sends are, uh, or the returns, are sent to uh, output uh, one and two. Yeah, and I also have effects enabled. And the first one is a reverb track. Uh, and uh, the second one is delay. The third one is, uh, I'm experimenting with it and it gave me quite good results. It's a transient, transient shaper. And the other is a mother ducker, but that's for another video. On outputs one and two and three and four, I have a channel strip. Okay. Let's get back to the mixer um, for the tracks. And I have set up uh, the kick that it has a transient uh, shaper and a and channel strip. And yeah, of course, it's grayed out the mother ducker input. Well, as you can see, all the other go to output one and two. Okay. Well, what I normally do is uh, just play a little uh, 
uh, a melody or something on the virus or the digitone or whatever. And when I'm happy with what I got and I want to start a song uh, with, uh, with the melody, I know in what key it's in and then what scale I want to play it. And that's when I go to the last track, the drum synth track, and create a kick in the right pitch that belongs to the scale. Okay, you can also uh, create a multi and create all your sounds in, in a multi, so all your hi-hats and such. And uh, in a later video I will show you how you can easily export those sounds to a drum track. Well, exporting is not, <laughs> it's not quite the exact word, but making available. Okay, well, close this. Yeah, uh, I promise to keep it short, so uh, this is how I start every project. And in the next video, I will think I'll go into, yeah, perhaps the, the drum synth and how I export sounds uh, to a drum track. Okay, well, that's it for now. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye.